The Midwest is one of West Australia's nine regions and spans from the coast near Geraldton inland to the Gibson Desert. Inland areas of the Midwest are typically arid and receive on average less than 250 millimetres of rainfall each year. The Department of Water may have come up with a solution to the water shortage problem in our Midwest. We're able to give people the information they need on where the, the best water is, how much can be sustainably pumped, its interaction with the different ecosystems in the area and basically just fantastic information, not just for people who are looking for water, but for us as water managers. This search is looking into the properties of hidden groundwater resources held inside old river valleys long covered with sediment and dunes. These ancient riverbeds, or paleo channels, were created millions of years ago, buried beneath the ground and often still hold water. Today little has been known about the nature and potential of these paleo channels to deliver sustainable water supplies. Airborne electromagnetic survey technology is being used to locate and accurately map the paleo channels on a regional scale. During the aerial survey, a helicopter flies at approximately 90 metres above the ground with a coil hung beneath it that sends an electromagnetic pulse into the ground. Equipment attached to the helicopter records the return signal. Lead hydrogeologist Scott McCauley and team this year collected 14,022 kilometres of AEM data over a survey area of approximately 52,000 square kilometres in six weeks. Expert analysis of the signal provides vital information about groundwater in the area and assists in decisions about future on-site drilling and other investigations. This information is added to geological and groundwater quality information from more than 2,000 existing boreholes across the project area. With the help of CSIRO, a picture of these rivers is slowly emerging. The Murchison Paleo channels were carved into Archean bedrock of the Yilgarn Craton around 2.5 million years ago. At this time of history, a long period of global cooling was ending and the Quaternary period of the Earth's history was starting, transforming the climate and landscape with millions of years dominated by ice ages until around 10,000 years ago. The mapping of these ancient rivers shows paleo channels vary in depth but are up to approximately 200 metres deep and hold lots of water. No, this is, I would say without a shadow of doubt, a unique example of targeted airborne electromagnetics for such a large area. Here we're actually thinking through carefully the, the nature of the aquifer systems where they are uh, likely to be present, employing other data to help us design the survey and then executing the survey based on that information. And I think this just illustrates the value of taking that considered approach. It's a two-way process, that's why it's collaborative. It's, it's intended to be a two-way uh, process of interaction that, that we both learn from each other. You know, that's the one reason why CSIRO's in this. It's, it's about effective ways of employing hydrogeophysical data, deploying it, using it, and applying it. So while we're very much in the applied science business, CSIRO is more looking at that emerging new ways of doing things. So by accessing CSIRO, we have access to their ongoing research program as well. New ways of thinking that may not have occurred to us. New ways of processing this, interpreting this that may not have occurred to us. We get access to all of that by working collaboratively with CSIRO. Groundwater is the region's main source of water and supports towns, mining, pastoralism and the environment. With most of the area's shallow groundwater resources already used and plans to expand the region's towns and industries, the search for new water supplies has begun as part of the State Government's Royalties for Regions program. With access to this new information, the potential exists to secure new reliable water supplies for the region's towns and to support mining, pastoral and future agricultural activities. This project is funded by Royalties for Regions as part of the Regional Water Availability Investigation Programme.